Spielman with a roundup of the sixth round of the candidates tournament in the Ekaterinburg. Um, it's still going on, as you can see in this position. A little while ago, uh, yeah, uh, Kirill Alexienko was managing to defend himself against Anish Giri, but he's now losing. I mean, okay, there are assessments there, but you can just ask a um, an end game table base, and it'll tell you he's now lost. I didn't see exactly what happened a few moves ago. Um, some somewhere around about here, he managed to get control. Uh, obviously, it's very very unpleasant. Once he's won this, then it's definitely clear. Um, okay, so he's going to win, Geary. Um, so today's round, I don't know if anybody noticed, but um, there was um, a, I'm just checking this is running nicely, it is, um, there was, there were different pairings for what you might expect in a normal all play all tournament. And the reason for that is that when you have a double round tournament, the final two rounds of the first half are inverted. So this is round seven in some sense, round six. And the reason that's done is to avoid somebody having a triple colour. There are some double colours, but no triple colours. Otherwise, you get triple colours. So the main game of the day, well, the two main games of the day, I guess, were Nipomnishi against Ding Lia Ren and Grishchuk against Karoana. And this is the big game, because Nipomnishi is really motoring at the moment. He played one of these Lopez lines, one of these anti martial lines. And... Ding has played this several times before. Rook b2 is a new move. Looks quite a good move. It um, protects this pawn and also provides lateral protection over here, actually, later. So this was his new move. And he went knight, knight d4. I guess he should maybe have gone knight e7. I mean, it's presumably slightly better for white. But what happened was... This position, um, Black's problem is that if he isn't careful, the knight will get um, established firmly on d5. So if you go here, here, and some stupid move, I don't know, g6, then we'd take. And this would be a, a huge advantage to white, I think, with this enormous knight in the middle of the board. But it would certainly be very, very pleasant to play. So Black is trying to avoid that, and he... I don't know if taking was right or not. He now hits the knight, which obviously has to move. And now <coughs> b5 is a positional threat. I mean, you're not threatening to take on d4 yet, but well, you will be eventually. And Ding played probably a good move, d5. So now white has a positional advantage, but black is quite active. Notice that in this position, this rook is protecting this knight. And that is probably something that Nupomishi knew before the game. So Ding's just said, right, I'm going to stomp my pawn up the board and hope I get enough counterplay. Um, okay, they got to here. <coughs> and Ding played a blunder. He should have gone Queen F5. He went Queen G4. Uh, Queen F5, I think, might have been just about okay. Um, let me just have a look. I'll check my notes say elsewhere in my chess base file um, I'm going Queen F5, Knight D4, Queen G4 B7, Rook A7 uh, Queen E8 check that's right this little line now if you take this Knight then quite surprisingly after Queen checks here and here there's absolutely no defence because you're going to be able to um, get rid of um, the defender. I guess you have to go here. Check. Take, presumably. Maybe what? And this is supposedly completely winning. I'm not completely understanding why 
This is so good. Let me ask this engine. Mate in three. What's happening? Oh, you just got Queen H5 and B8. Sorry. I just hadn't thought of something as simple as that. I'm sorry. And checkmate. So, uh, you know, it's so easy as a human being to miss something. But in fact, in this position uh, here, you don't take the bishop, take the knight. You go bishop f6. And the game continues here. It's still a fight, I think. Because at the moment, white's king is very bad. Um, go rook b4 or something. And you're teetering on the edge of being attacked as white, but apparently you shouldn't be. Dangerous, but not. Um, there's some sort of d4, queen d5. I'm just following the engine here. And apparently, this is slightly better for white. But, um, okay, he should have gone queen f5. It's a difficult position. He went. He went queen g4. This is a bad move. Queen takes pawn. I think there was something even better here, actually. Uh, I think that after. No, queen takes this is good enough. Rook a5. So he's trying to get control of this diagonal, of course. So he can mate on g2. And the simplest thing here would just have been to play f3. And presumably black would have taken the queen. And this is a this is pretty good winning chances, I would have thought. Probably black is going to have to swap off, or certainly at least rook b6 and bishop b, rook 7b6 and bishop b6, probably. Better to keep the rooks on to have some chance. But with an extra pawn and excellent winning chances, I would think. Um, in fact, he played... King h1, by the way, was a very good move. Um, but preparing to defend the white squares. And this queen here check here, right, g1, defending the white squares. So um, Ding thought he saw, he could actually in this position, he could have played rook b6 apparently, which is very far from obvious. Rook takes, rook takes here. And the line continues, rook to here, rook e5, and that's essential to stop uh, queen e4 check in a moment. And the attack is so strong in this position that the best you can do as white is apparently this. And this is absolutely unobvious, of course, when black is got very good, good chances. I mean, black is very active here. Should be okay at this stage, I guess. So, in fact, this would have been... Um, all right for um, Ding at that moment, rook takes b6, but it wasn't obvious. People, I was streaming and people were asking, is this something that he'll see? And I thought he might do just because he wanted to play it so much. The way he actually did it, he did it this way. But there's queen h4 check. Now if you go rook d3, then you can go knight h3, rook takes pawn, king g2. Get your knight out and start playing. And presumably this is winning. That's not absolutely trivial, I would have thought. Maybe it is. The other thing that black could maybe do is just to let white take on d4. Hold the position and say, how are you actually going to get your knight out while um, the rook is on the 8th rank? But presumably there'd be some way to do something. Eventually you'd be able to play rook h3, I guess. Anyway, Ding resigned here. I guess he was pretty depressed. I'm sure he would have lost in the end. Um, and that was a very big deal because it, Nipomnishi is now on plus three, which is a massive score halfway through the tournament. So the other really big game, let's just go and see, has Geary won yet? He has won somehow. Yeah, he won in the end. Um, it was Grischuk against Caruana. Grischuk, I believe, yesterday said he didn't really want to be playing this tournament, which you can see. This is the line that Caruana played as black against MVL in the first round. You can't take an a5 because rook takes, bishop takes, takes is extremely good for white. This turns out to be a catastrophe for black. And um, if I ask an engine it's going to say plus quite a lot. Yeah, it's certainly bad. And so um, you go, so you get an a5 which is sort of useful in a way. 
get some space and stops knight a5, but it does leave the pawn vulnerable in the very long term. Stopping bishop g4. So in, in round one against MVL, uh, he played this Caruana, but this time he switched to rook e8. And there's a line that goes d5, bishop e3, takes here, and well, complicated. I mean, you can go queen d5 if you want. Probably black just plays rook f8 because you can't take the knight at the moment because your queen would be trapped. Uh, I don't think you go bishop e6, queen takes knight, bishop takes bishop, probably. Doesn't look very good. But um, this is supposed to be. Well, I don't know what it's supposed to be. This engine is saying plus 1.5, but who knows if it's right. And Caruana will have analysed it. What actually happened was that Greece Chip repeated a couple of... I think he should just have taken the draw here. I think he should have thought, OK, I've been surprised. I'm not very happy at the moment. I've got the whole of the second half of the tournament. Let's let it be. But he went rookie one. And it's a clever move. If queen takes knight, knight c5, rook takes rook, queen takes rook, queen takes pawn, uh, you can take on b3 is okay. Um, you need you need to get your queen to take on c7 because otherwise she's going to be trapped by rook b7. Obviously this had been prepared at home. I mean knight c5 is also a reasonable move. He went here, here. So black's got an extra pawn. I understand that white has got perfectly reasonable compensation, but I don't think he's better. And I think, given the choice between an early bath, uh, by, you know, by mutual agreement, and um, having to play this position as white, I would have chosen the early bath. I'm obviously not being sent off, but after. Getting some space. Nice move, pinning the knight. Queen h6, there's some sort of queen e5 move maybe. Which will threaten queen takes rook. Um, so they got to this position. I think queen c1 was right now. Basically, Greece took also had had no time for the last forever, and at this point he had two minutes, and Caruana had thirty four minutes. Caruana had started with an hour. Excuse me, I need to blow my nose. <coughs> um, a bit earlier, and Chris took played a dubious move. He should have gone queen c one. He went queen e four and got hit by c five. Now, if you go pawn takes pawn on pass on bishop b six, you're going to lose material. So Black's got in this advance, and now it's pretty unpleasant for White. Don't know if he should have done this and allowed Queen C. Queen C3. Well, I guess probably Caruana thought he was going to win the D5 pawn, but things can happen in the interim, and actually it's just about playable for White. Apparently, it looks very scary. If White can get in C, Bishop moves in C4, he's going to be okay. And, you know, bishop to c8 to b7 is obviously going to be a plan. But while you're doing it, you can move the bishop. If knight takes pawn, you'll have bishop a6 before the bishop moves to c8. And it's just about okay, probably. You want f5, uh, knight d2. And now Grishka played well, really, I think. That doesn't look particularly a scary one. I don't know if you go here, I think you might be taking... <clears throat> on f5 about now and going bishop b3 and you get in c4 as soon as you get in c4 you're basically okay by the way there's an amusing line that's going to go something like that's really not what blank wants to happen um just notice that now what actually happened was once you got in c4 then I think he's basically okay. Um, he's not in big danger now. And and this is sort of Caruana saying, 
I ought to have found a way to do this, but I didn't. Drawn. Why just puts the knight in e3, the king in g3, and says, so what, comrade? So, <coughs> um, or even anything really, anything to, to stop black getting in. You can put the knight in g3 and the king in d3 as well, obviously. And play h4, and you can't do anything at all. But you have to play h4. Um, so, um, interesting battle. Caruana's probably a little bit disappointed, because he should have managed to do something, I feel. Um, Wang Hao against uh, Vashir Lagra. That was a Grunfeld, and we'll just look at it quickly. This is trendy nowadays, h4, also trendy in this position. Uh, now I think Bishop B5 has been played in the game, but MVL obviously prepared this. He went Queen. Wondered if he could possibly sack the exchange. Obviously not. <coughs> Excuse me. And probably this is a tad better flight. Can't take and play e7 because of either bishop c6 or knight d6. And he's just, if a6 you have knight a4. Black's just not in time to stop knight b5. So white wins a pawn. But on the other hand, while you're winning the pawn, black gets a glorious blockade. I guess that's a good move. I don't know. I mean, it. I wonder if you should start with f4. It's just happened while I was, I don't particularly like, I mean g4 allowed black to play g5, so, and that's a good king side for black. Um, I wonder, as I said, if you could play f4, maybe you didn't like that for some reason, but that would be, I suppose you may not ever be able to get in g4 then, but, um, I don't know, uh, it's just a thought. It's a good move. If White had time to play g5 and f4, then his advantage would definitely have increased because he'd be he'd have targets in f7 and g6 for his bishop in the long term, which might or might not matter. Um, so g5 is a good move. Now they played a lot of moves. I thought he was egging the pudding a bit. Uh, Wang, but actually he managed to, well you'd like to play knight takes, but unfortunately then takes, takes and f4 is extremely strong, or at least it's very unpleasant because you're going to end up, um, he's got to go g4, if he takes the king gets to e5 and it's winning, and after g4 you put the king in g3 and try to play that position. Obviously, you must have winning chances with a pawn on f4, and I don't know if it's winning or not. It doesn't really matter. Uh, all that matters is it's unpleasant. So he took him back with the bishop. That's a good move. You really don't want white to be able to get in king e5 and king e6. And I think this is probably defensible. I, I actually went out, I streamed for about four hours and I went for a rest for a bit. So I didn't watch this, but I watched, I saw what happened afterwards, and the knight went round and round in circles. Basically staying in touch with f3, and after, after a, a sufficiently long time, they agreed to draw. So they got to this position eventually. Uh... I don't understand particularly why he didn't just go nice. Oh, well, they agreed to draw here, of course, didn't they? He didn't play king d5. Um, you're going to go here now and take this pawn and here. And that's that. So, um, another hard fight, and we can just have a glance now and see 
Hagiri one. It was a uh, was one of these Kyoto pianos. Didn't seem to go terribly well for black, really. For white, if you take twice an e5, it'll be a bishop f2 check and queen f6 check. At the moment. If you take an e6, then queen g3 is at least equal. This was a good move. If knight takes f4, which looks like a good move, then bishop b4 messes up black's coordination. And basically is alright. Very nice move that. So black's got a clear advantage. You can't go queen f d4 because he'd like to f5 to e7 check so I assume he can't but um, he can just start to play against the isolated pawn I don't think really white should have allowed d5 to happen but he's still slightly better I suppose for some reason he didn't take on b7 now I don't really know why um, I think that would have been perfectly okay uh, you know, I think he, he befuddled himself. He thought he was doing something better, but actually he wasn't. Now, you know, there are chances. Um, holding queen f1 and knight f3 mate. Queen a1. Don't know if black could do better at this moment. Let's just ask the engine. Oh, well, he... What he actually did was he went to check here. Winning a pawn. Just he couldn't take the knight because of queen, a, queen h1 check. And off they went. And eventually Geary won this. It must have been drawn for a very long time. It's absolute hell on earth to defend of course. Is it now winning? Maybe it's now winning. Should go knight h3, apparently. Just hold the position. And apparently this should be a draw if you go knight. Yeah, he should have got knight f2 check, of course, silly boy. He just. Yeah. I mean, knight f2 check would hold, because uh, cause you get to the f4 square. He was just getting tired, wasn't he? He just compassed his cell by. Uh, I mean, the engine tells him, well, the table base tells me this is a draw. But he went past his cell by. I mean, poor man, he's, it's all very splendid that he's the wild card. I don't know. Uh, still now losing according to the engine to the table base. Okay. Now he's got, and, and apparently it's, well, whatever you like, uh, the one at the bottom is better. It tells you the absolute truth. And he's going to be able to do something very bad to him, isn't he? Obviously, I haven't really thought about it. But it's clear that you're going to queen a pawn here very soon. So, very tough round. Nipomnishi is now a whole point clear. And we'll have to see what happens. There's a rest day tomorrow. I will be streaming. I hope I won't be streaming from my nose, but streaming here uh, on Wednesday for round seven. And I, and I hope we'll have lots more bloodshed. Okay, that is that. Just go and do this this way.